name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. I'd like to thank you all for giving me this, uh, allowing me this uh, great opportunity, taking such a great blessing from your church, uh, such a blessed church. Uh, today I'd like to read you a, a short passage from the book of St. Mark, chapter 11, verse number 12. Uh, now the next day when the head come out from the Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps if he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Actually, this uh, uh, was a part of uh, today's reading for the Monday uh, uh, Pascha Gospel. Actually, uh, during, during Holy Week, we all care about ritual or spiritual. That, that's a question. Do we care about ritual or spiritual? Uh, Normally, the Holy Week featured rituals are, uh, I'm going to list like a few of them. I'm going to go quickly through it, and let's see what it says. Normally, we care about performing hymns in a very professional manner. Um, we get the picture or icon of the cross or Jesus hung on the cross in front of us the whole week. We put black clothes or veils on the covered tables, mangalayas. Um, pillars, even church walls. Um, we sing hymns with mournful tunes, um, like Thok Teti Dom, Thine is the Power, The Glory, The Blessing, we all know that. Um, a lot of hymns, uh, like Peik uh, Thronos, your, uh, means your throne, O God, is forever and ever, or Omonogenes, or Only Begotten Son, the Eternal and Immortal. Um, we read prophecies and Old Testament, and we don't use Agbeya at all. We get it replaced with the with the, um, the uh, Basca prayer, Thok Tetigum. This is all good stuff, but actually not our main goal. Um, like now with the COVID-19 and what's going on, but if we don't have any of these rituals, what if we don't even have a church to use for prayer? Does this have any impact on our uh, um, spiritual life. Uh, like, for example, some people, me too, would think that spirituality during Holy Week it might include the following. Some people, they fast for long, long hours, probably till 4 or 5 p.m. or uh, even longer. Um, like Baba Shnuda, he used to do that. Like, um, he used to fast starting uh, Friday, Good Friday, till Easter time. And also, um, some people, they would go with mitanias and uh, uh, especially on Good Friday, they go with 400 mitanias and this stuff. Some people, they turn off their TVs and tablets to, during Holy Week. Others, they don't eat sweet stuff at all. I know some people, they do that. We all follow the church schedule, um, prayers, day and night, readings. But again, this is all good stuff but this is not on like my, our own goal. Our main goal is not this. These are all rituals. These are all tools we use for spirituality. It helps the spirituality. Because what I found out that once the Holy Week is over and Easter is here, we go back to normal or abnormal, I would say. Like the curve goes down instead of going up after Holy Week, then what happened? We're assuming that we had a spiritual storage during a great Lent and uh, we had a good stuff, but why is this happening? Why the curve is going, up, is going down? Uh, from my point of view, uh, I believe this is because sometimes I miss our main goal. I miss my main goal. So what is the main goal? What's our goal? It's all about building a re relationship with God. It's all about building a relationship with the Lord. So we don't want to be like uh, what I just read a few minutes ago. We don't want to be like fake fruit, just leaves. We don't want to be like this. We want to be like a tree carrying real fruit, not fake fruit. So the question that comes, 
how to build a relationship with God, how to have a good relationship with God. First of all, it all, it all happens with God's help and, and grace. Without God's grace, we can't do anything. We have to show that will and he's the one, we have to show that he's the one who helps us change. We cannot change ourselves. So again, our main goal, let's not go with the superficial spiritual life. Let's not go with the only basics in our spiritual life. We have to go deeper and deeper because our spiritual life is to enjoy living in heaven on earth, not just please, uh, just pleasing God. It's not th just that. I'll give you examples. For, the, for example, when I go for confession, and I sit with my father of confession, don't just sit and confess, then go without discipleship. What do I mean by discipleship? Don't just sit with your father of confession, and just get absolution and get, uh, to get communion and that's it. No, that's not the way. Actually, uh, once I sit with my father of confession, I got the absolution, that's fine. I need that for communion. But the problem is still there, still sitting in there. We have to tackle the issue. Why I don't wanna pray? That's one of the issues. For example, why I don't like praying? Why, why I don't like liturgies or reading the Bible? I have to, to, to tackle the issue. So that where, where the word discipleship came from. So I have to ask my father of confession to help me to, to resolve the issue, not just getting the, uh, the absolution, that's it. So normally confession has two phases. The first phase, just dumping my sins on my father of confession. Just sit with him, dump, you, dump your sins, tell him whatever you've done, and that's it. Phase two is discipleship. It's like uh, a little kid and his parents guide him to the right path. Like the same with the father of confession. I'll have to ask him to give me like spiritual exercise if needed, some cases needed. So I'll have to remember that don't just go superficial. We have to go deeper. The other example is just prayers. So uh, we all know that sometimes Praying is boring for some of us. Like, I don't feel like praying today. I, I don't have that spirit. Um, or some people, uh, or someone would say like, uh, uh, yeah, normally I, uh, normally I pray like on and off or uh, every other night because uh, I'm, I'm just trying to please God. Uh, I'm just trying to stick to that commitment. I'm just trying to do what I have to do. No, that's not the way we have to go deeper. We have to learn how to pray. I'll have to learn how to pray. I'll have to learn how do I feel every single word coming, coming out of my mouth. When I stand up for prayer, that means connection between me and God. It's not just prayer and few words coming up. So uh, how about some of us, they would come say that uh, they wouldn't feel any word that they say, like they pray. Like they, uh, they don't have that spirit when they stand up for prayer. It just feels like a few words coming out, spiritual canon, canon, they just perform that spiritual canon, and that's it. Um, uh, I would say that we all lose few mistakes. Um, so again, I don't, I don't have to go superficial with prayer. Like for example, I go to this type of people, to, I, I go back to this uh, uh, point of uh, uh, people that they pray, we, we're just, just praying just because we have to. I don't feel any word. So uh, I'll have to ask my question, stop here and ask my que myself a question. Was this the same situation 10 or 15 years ago? Was it the same thing? If the answer is yes, then there must be something wrong. Will, would this be the situation 10 or 15 or 20 years later, I'll pray one psalm or, uh, or just a prime prayer or just uh, our father and go to bed. If the answer is yes, there must be something wrong. I'll have to check myself. Because in our spiritual life, we have to go ahead, to move forward. I mean, uh, there has to be an improvement. It's just not, just not like uh, we stand up for prayer and that's it. It's not just uh, like a spiritual canon. 
in our spiritual life, there is no limit. We have to keep growing and growing. So uh, I want to ask myself a question. If I'm this kind of uh, people that they just pray and don't feel even a single word, they don't have that spirit, I'm going to ask myself a question. Do you go slow when you pray? No. Do you pray loud? No. Do you hold a cross? No. Think of every single word you pray. Again, those are practical steps. Helps me when I, uh, they help me when I stand up for prayer to focus, to get more focused, to feel what I'm praying. Go slow in your prayer. Not very slow, but a bit slower. Pray with a loud voice so that you don't fall asleep while you're praying. Hold the cross in your hand. Think of every single word that you pray. That's how you can feel your prayer. You don't have to go superficial. We have to go deeper. I'll have to ask my father of confession how to pray, how to use Jesus' prayer. Or we all heard about uh, Jesus' prayer. What is the Jesus' prayer is? Jesus' prayer is, oh, Lord Jesus Christ, help me. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. This prayer is very powerful, strong prayer. It's like errors going against the enemy. That's what the church fathers, they say. So uh, don't go deeper in your prayer. I'll have to, to, to check with my father of confession. How do I go deeper in my prayer? Don't just get absolution and that's it. So uh, church fathers, they uh, said about prayer, it's like a ladder goes step by step. You can't jump like a, a big jump in your spiritual life or prayer. Like, for example, some people, or uh, when I get a day off, I would say, yeah, I do have a lot of hours today. Uh, you, you know what? Uh, I'll go with the prime hour prayer from my, the Agbeya. Uh, I'll go with the third hour, sixth hour, and twelfth uh, hour. This is not good because... The right thing is to check with your father of confession first. I'll have to check with my father of confession before I have uh, a big jump in my uh, spiritual life, in my spiritual life, or uh, before I add something to my prayer. I have to check with him before every single step that I take into my spiritual life. And also, I want to mention that we, we all have to be honest, faithful, and the uh, commandment for prayer if we were staying honest and uh, on or faithful to that uh, habit every night it will take us to the next lord the, the lord will help us to take us to that next level for prayer um again it's always god's grace we cannot change ourselves it's always god's grace um i do have a short story to share with you guys um, a story of a monk, um, he was a very simple guy, very simple man, and uh, all he knew that it was a very short prayer, that's all he knew. And one day, the other monks in the monastery, they noticed that he doesn't, he's not aware of all this prayer they, they do, like uh, midnight praises, uh, Coptic stuff, and uh, and uh, sixth hour prayer, uh, when they uh, gather for uh, another prayer, they, he doesn't participate. He has only short prayer. That's all he knows. And one day they decided that he has uh, he has to leave the monastery. Like they wanted to kick him out because uh, he's not improved. Like he doesn't work on his uh, spiritual uh, life. Uh, he does, he's not aware of all this stuff. And they told him that he was fine with that. He said, well, fathers, uh, I'll leave on that day, but would you allow me to take my cell? Cell is uh, the monk's room, uh, personal room uh, that he lives in. So, fathers, would you allow me to take my cell with me? Uh, they were thinking that he, he might be not so crazy. No one can do that. But they allowed him to do that. He took a rope, he put it around his uh, cell, and he started pulling the cell, and the, 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 the weird thing that the cell started moving, following him. So uh, the other monks they realized that they made a mistake. Prayer, not just with the with the, that long in quantity, no. 
It's just with the deep, how deep it is. I'll have to go deeper in my prayer. No, doesn't matter how many songs I pray. It matters, am I understanding what I'm praying? Does it go to my heart? Do I understand I feel every word coming out of my mouth? If not, I'll have to get myself trained for that so that I don't carry fake fruit. Um, the other point, Bible, um, one of the examples, have your own Bible, don't go with just tablet to read the, before you go to bed or during your uh, daily reading because you'll need to underline verses. Uh, so have a real Bible, not just a, an electronic device. Finish what you have started with. Like don't just go randomly with the uh, Genesis and the Gospel of John, then go back to Genesis or uh, St. Mark. It, it doesn't go like that. We need to learn how to read Bible. We'll, we'll have to go deeper. We have to understand what we are doing. We have to check with our father of confession. That's the discipleship, how to go deeper. And if I don't understand, ask the Lord, God help me to understand what I'm reading. Um, the other point is communion and liturgies. Don't go superficial when you attend a, a communion and liturgy. Just think of every single word in the liturgy. For example, thanksgiving prayer. Um, when it comes to the part that it says, for the eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Deal with us according to your goodness. O you who give food to all flesh, fill our hearts with joy and gladness. That's an amazing part. You can pray with this part, use this part for prayer, like it goes directly to our heart. Also, in the liturgy, when it comes to that part that it says, lead us throughout the way into your kingdom. That's an amazing part. We can pray, we can use this part for prayer. Don't go just superficial with the, with the liturgy and uh, attending the liturgy just uh, as a habit. Go get communion and that's it. Try to pray. Also, when it comes to fractions, the fraction has a lot of prayers. Last thing, um, for examples that we, we, I might go uh, superficial, I'll have to go deeper. I'll have to have my spiritual readings. I'll have to have to maintain this habit to read books, spiritual books, because they help us. It, the, the church fathers, they say that spiritual readings fire up your heart. So it helps for, uh, uh, it helps our spiritual life to get improved. Finally, um, I'm gonna list a few practical steps during the whole week to help us to work on our spirituality. Number one, confess. Number two, use Jesus prayer as much as you can. Number three, pray through Tetigom at home with your kids and family. Number four, read the Basha Gospels every day. Number five, read a nice book that's soluble to the whole week. Number six, think of what habits you can change and ask for God's help. Um, again, it's all with God's help and grace. We cannot change ourselves. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.